Hi everyone, Pastor Matt here with another weekly encouragement video. Look, I'm, I'm sure we've all been made aware of the initial easing of the COVID-19 restrictions that have happened over the last week here in New South Wales. Um, yeah, it was, it was welcome news for many of us. And while there may still be quite a long time and difficult road to where we might want things to be, I think most of us have been encouraged at least a little that, that things are moving in a positive direction. Yeah, but amid all the hope that we have, um, we've also heard words of caution, haven't we? Uh, you know, these fears and speculations of a, of a second wave of infection still clouds the future. Uh, and we're being told to remain cautious, even though we are at the same time being given back uh, some more freedom as, as these restrictions are being lifted. You know, it reminds me of a, of a message I heard from an Ethiopian Lutheran pastor who came out to Australia back in the early 2000s. And one of the reasons I guess I remember it is because of his wonderful deep voice and African accent. Um, I, I don't know about you, but I seem to have a memory for accents and, and for little phrases that just sound so different and rich when, when spoken through uh, a different accent. But he was preaching about uh, Jesus' last instructions to his disciples, and he had this one phrase, and look, I don't know if I can do the accent or not, but I'll, I'll give it a go. He kept repeating the phrase, saying, Go, but wait. Go, but wait. Um, and see, you know, there's this, this kind of comes from uh, two different uh, accounts in the Gospels. Uh, so at the end of, of Matthew's Gospel, Jesus tells his disciples to go, and to make disciples of all nations. Um, so Jesus certainly sends his people out and wants them to go. But at the end of Luke's gospel, Luke kind of emphasizes another of Jesus' instructions. So in, in Luke chapter 24, verse 49, Jesus actually tells the disciples to stay in Jerusalem until they've been clothed with power from on high. And Luke picks this up again as, as his introduction uh, to the continuation of the story in the book of Acts, where he reminds us that this is where the disciples are. They're waiting to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You know, it can be very tempting for us to, to rush ahead of God. You can imagine the mixed senses of excitement and fear of the disciples after finally coming to understand uh, was so much of what it was that Jesus had taught them about the reality of what he was here to do and uh, yeah, the, the work that God had done through his death and resurrection. I imagine they probably felt equal parts the temptation to rush out and tell everyone the good news but also the equal fear of, of persecution by association with Jesus. And maybe we can understand that a little bit more today as we experience both the joy of um, additional freedoms than what we've had over the last few weeks, but that freedom still tinged with the overhanging threat of coronavirus. But I think there's something in this whole go but wait uh, message for us. You know, I know we're all keen to be able to see our friends and worship together, physically together, as, as soon as possible. And let me assure you that Pastor Mark and I, together with the Lifeway leadership team, are working hard to make that happen. But at Lifeway, we, we've always tried to be led not just by our own wisdom and understanding, but also to try and discern God's timing and direction for us as we meditate on His Word and wait on the Holy Spirit in both prayer and praise. So I guess that's my encouragement to us all this week for us to, to get ready to go because God will send us out again and we will meet together again for worship in our church buildings. That will happen. But um, make the most of this waiting time. You know, God uses these waiting times to prepare us for what's coming next. And I have to say, as I look through scripture and as I reflect on my own experience um, as a Christian, that I have always found that God tends to lead his people forward into new things. Very rarely, if ever, does God lead us back to the way things used to be, um, but rather he leads us on into something new and something better. 
So if that's what God's doing here and, and we're getting prepared to, to move on into something new, um, let's, let's make the most of this time and let's make sure that we're getting ourselves ready so that when the call to go finally comes as it did for those disciples on that first Pentecost Sunday, uh, that we will be ready to go and to serve God and um, in the places that he places us and with the message of hope and love and forgiveness and grace that he has given us through Jesus Christ.